more than ever valuable. Thank you. 
Lord. And we know, Lord, that you would hear and answer prayer, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would just continue to bless all of the sick, the shedding, the less fortunate, and the bereaved families, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would go into hospitals and nursing homes and prisons and jails and just stop by Bethel AME Church in West Memphis, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. Whatever it is that you're going through, Lord, we just don't give it up to you, Lord, but we know that you hear and answer prayer. Lord, help us, Lord. Help us in the midst of this trial situation that we're born in, Lord. But even we don't know, you know, you know, you know, Lord, help us, Lord, help us, Lord, to understand it. I know that we will understand it by and by, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would just come to our worship service, Lord, again, Lord. We ask that you would just let the Holy Spirit come in all day, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to receive the word all day, Lord. And we ask that you would just bless our hearts. Pastor Bank, that he come with the word, Lord. Let us be able to open up and hear the word, Lord, and receive it in our hearts, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your mighty God, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for having so much love for us, Lord. That you sacrificed your life for us, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but Lord, we thank you, Lord. Scripture, Daniel chapter 3. Amen. Chapter 3, and then come down with us briefly to verse 13. Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Reading from the King James Version, you will find these words. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fear, and then to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, blue, harp, sackbut, the psalter, the disclaimer, and all kinds of music, ye, ye should fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour 
into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? End of the reading, as recorded by Daniel chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. God bless the reading of his holy word.
Praise the Lord. I expect a miracle today. The children say, believe it and receive it. We come now for our intercessory prayer moments that you might come to the altar your way and have a little talk with the Lord. We want to reach out to you and we come for this intercessory hour to invite your attention and focus on thanking God that he allowed our own from the last time we gathered Tim White to be able to go into his uh, situation with his doctor, amen, somebody, amen. and brought him right on out of there. And, and sometimes you have to go back just to make sure that what they said the first time is all right. That's okay. Praise the Lord. We are happy and delighted to know that God is still blessing him. I want to ask you also to remember uh, our own Sandra Moore as we prepare to come to the altar. She had surgery on yesterday. Amen. And she's at Baptist DeSoto. You know there are different situations at certain hospitals now, but thank God for the sale. Amen. Yes, and I would encourage the church family to remember her and do what we know to do for our own. Let the church say amen. I want to ask you what also as you prepare to get to see on behalf of others. I celebrated and shared with uh, the late Reverend Ralph Porsche Stevens in his homegoing celebration. Like one of my teammates in high school. Amen. Somebody. Lots of memories, fun memories, lots of great times. Uh, but God is still yes. in control. Yes. I want to ask you to intercede on behalf of that family, their hour of bereavement. I need to let you know also that on this morning we heard of the homegoing on yesterday of Mrs. T.B. Lamb, former presiding elder T.B. Lamb. Why? Uh, arrangements are pending, but certainly we'll keep you abreast on arrangements when they are made. So as we come now, we know that everybody needs prayer. We know that every family needs prayer. We know that this country needs prayer. We certainly know that the world needs prayer. Sometimes just when you think You've come through, only to find out that you have just still started as we look across this country with the COVID-19 crisis. That's why I'm so happy, I'm so relieved. My only consolation is to know that my God is still in control. He still has the last vote. Those of you that desire to come, we invite you to come down uh, for prayer. Those of you in Facebook land and YouTube and in Zoom, it's prayer time. Find your corner, find your hole, find your spot. Go and talk to our God in prayer. Listen to him as he speaks to us.
church. Amen, somebody. I know some of you remember that. I used to go out on Friday night uh, and on Saturday night too. And then couldn't get up and go to church on Sunday morning. But back in that day, we had a mom and a daddy that made sure. Amen. Somebody. Didn't matter where you went last night. Ball game, anything else. You were going to go to church. Let me leave y'all alone. Thank you so much. We, we, we thank our children helping us to usher in the Holy Spirit. So come back with us to the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel. You are all familiar with it. We learned this story back in grade school, didn't we? Yeah, going to Sunday school. It's a familiar passage of scripture. It won't take much. So happy to see Mr. Truett kick in on us. Amen. My eyes are bad, but I can still see. Are you there? Come with us back to the third chapter and let us pick up where we stopped reading 
earlier. And you know what? I'm not going to be able to finish all of this. But there is a word alone. Are you there? Come then down with us where we stopped off. And let's look at the third chapter of Daniel. Beginning the reading for the well, verse 16. For your reading earlier, we read for your hearing verses 13 through 15. You need to put that in context. And now come with us to verse 16. Three verses. Reading from the King James Version. There you're going to find these words. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from your burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18. But somebody say, but if not. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want to end the reading there. And I want to encourage and strongly request you to continue reading from the 19th verse down through that chapter. Amen. But for today from verses 16, 17, and 18 of the third chapter of Daniel, I want to share this subject, this topic with you from that passage of scripture. Obey the king. Obey the king. Can okay, we pray together? Oh, merciful Lord our God, unto thee we come in thy holy presence. Humbly begging you to have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord God, of all our sins that we have committed both by thought, word, and deed. Through the blood of Jesus, now wash us, cleanse us, restore in us the right mind and the right spirit. Help us, God, to sin no more. Cast our sins into the sea of forgiveness. Never to rise no more. Help us now, God, to sin no more. We are standing in the need of prayer. We need you, Lord God, We need you right now. Come now, Master, and have your way. Move our situations out of the way. Help us to tune in on your word. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So let the church say, Amen. Obey the king. Uh, our universe 
clearly is based upon order. It has structure. It has organization. Yeah, that's why we have four seasons. And the Lord blessed us with living here on earth. God himself actually establishes the first order. And that first order is the creator. Yeah. He's God. And God himself establishes that for us way back in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. He says that in the beginning, who? God created the heaven and the earth. Yeah, it was God who then said, let there be light. And there was light. It was God who had said, let there be a firmament. And we had heaven come into existence. He, he said, let there be lights in the heaven. And he said, let there be man. Let us make man in our own image. God, God establishes for us that first order, and that is that God is the creator. This, the second order is that by man's nature, Someone has to be in charge. Someone has to provide leadership. Somebody has to ensure social order. Amen, somebody. And down through man's existence, this has happened. God has always made allocations for it being so. And during the time of the text, that person that was in charge, that was responsible, that was providing leadership, that was giving guidance, that was in to ensure social order, that person was the king. Amen, somebody. So, so the king back then was equivalent to the president of the United States of America today. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was how they were similar in nature. And, and the president of the United States today is considered to be the most powerful position in the world. I didn't say the most powerful man. I said the most powerful position in the world. And, and even though there are other presidents of other countries, there are monarchs and there are supreme leaders. There are other kings of other countries, but the president of the United States is considered to be the, the, the leader of the world. So when the king speaks, everyone listens. When the king speaks, everyone reacts. That's why the stock market does what it does when it the president talks, everybody's listening, and, and there's a reaction. When, when the king gives an order, when he signs a decree, everyone is to obey the order. And just like today, if you choose not to obey the king's order, there are consequences. So in the pretext leading up to our text today, there was a decree, an order that had been signed by King Nebuchadnezzar. The king had, had, had built a big golden image. And they say that the image was 90 feet tall and that it was nine feet wide. He had set up this thing that he was going to project and and he, he put together a jazz band, if you will. It, it, it had in it some of all of the instruments from the land. 
They were getting ready for the dedication of this golden image. They brought in the drums and the cymbals. They added the flute and the saxophone. They brought in the clarinet and the guitar. They, they had the keyboard and the organ. They had the choir ready. They had this big band that was ready to celebrate the, the, the dawning of this golden image that the king had, had built. When the sounds of the band played, the order and the decree said that everyone was together. The, the, the governors of the states were to come together. The, the mayors and the city council people were to come together. The, the police were to be there. The firemen were to be there. The lawyers and the doctors were to be there. The, the rich folk had to come. The poor folk had to be there. Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, everybody had to come. The red and the yellow, the black and the white. When the band started to play, everybody was to come to honor the king's request, the image that he had built. You read the story. You, you heard about it. You, you studied that story. And so on this great dedication day, when, when when, when the big golden image was ready to go on display, somebody heard the band was playing, the, the drum beat started to happen, the, the organ joined in, the guitars started to play, and, and, and the jingles started to happen. And everybody knew that it was time for the celebration to begin. So when the band started playing, everybody obeyed the king's order. They came from the north and from the south. They came from the east and they came from the west. And they gathered there in front of this big 90-foot tall golden image. But the Bible says that there were three young Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They were part of the king's leadership team. They came, but, but they had a problem. They had learned and they had read about the God of the universe. No doubt their understanding of God became permanently etched in their mind. They, God had, had been real to them. And they, they had tried God and they had tested everything and they, they found out that no matter what situation they were in, they found out that God always came to their rescue. No doubt they fasted and they, they prayed and they had done all that they knew to do and they had gone through this personal relationship with God. So they concluded that when the band started to play and when the drums were starting to beat it. When everybody had gathered, they concluded that they were not going to bow down. They established that they were not going to be ruled by some outside force. They, they determined that they had to follow the God that they had trusted. They had established and they had tested tried their God. They had been in this personal relationship that had convinced them that when God had said before that thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, they, 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 they realized that God meant every word that he had said. And one of the commandments he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And they, they believed that God meant that. And they, they stood on the promises of God. The all-powerful king found out that the three Hebrew boys were, refused to obey his order. The Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar became furious. He was, he was angry. And, and I know one of the questions that he said to himself was, who do they think they are? How is it that they think they can disobey the king? I am the king. Maybe he felt like they didn't understand the order. Maybe he, he felt like 
they didn't quite get it. Maybe he thought that they didn't realize that it was I, the king, who would give them the oil. So the king before him stretched out the red carpet, gave him something to drink, maybe put a few dollars in their pocket. I don't know, but he brought them before him and he said to them, now, I'm going to give you three fellows one more chance to obey the king. I'm going to have the band to start playing. When you hear the music, here's all you got to do. Just bow down. Worship the golden image. And if you will do that, I'll do like Trump did. I'll pardon you. I'll give you another chance. I'll forgive you. I'll, I'll pretend that nothing happened. Just bow down when the music starts playing. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego said to the king, we don't need to defend ourselves. There is nothing for us to say. We don't need to hear the music from the band. You don't have to call on them to play another time. We don't need to hear the instruments. We are telling you right now, whether it's today or tomorrow, or whether it's next week or next year, we have determined that we are not going to bow down to your God. They said to the king, the almighty God that we now know, the almighty God that we now serve, he is able. I said he's able. He can deliver us out of your hands. Just because you laid the carpet out for us, just because you gave us something to eat, just because you pay our fees, just because we get our check from you every week, we are not going to do it. Our God is able to fill us and to supply our every need. And my God is able to deliver us out of your hand. I want to help somebody. When folk think they control you, when folk think they have you in the palm of their hand, they expect something in return. They may not ask for it today. They may not ask for it tomorrow. But sooner or later, they're going to knock on your door and they're going to ask for something in return. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were simply saying to the king, you can take this leadership position. You can have it back. Because if you expect us to bow down to your God, you've got another stop coming. The three Hebrew boys said that not only is our God able to deliver us from your hands, but the God that we serve, he's also able. I said my God is able to deliver us from a fiery furnace. My God can do all things whenever he chooses to. He can open up doors that have been shut. He can pick us up when we've been knocked down. He can turn us around and plant our feet on solid ground. Our God is able, O oh King, to deliver us from your hands. He's able to deliver us from a fiery furnace. Paul said it later on another way. Paul said it this way. He said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, angels nor principalities, powers, things present, things to come. There is no height, there is no depth, there is no creature, there is no golden image. Shall I allow to separate me from the love? Of God, I serve Him in the morning. I serve Him at noonday. 
I serve him at the midnight hour. I serve him when I'm getting up in the morning. I love God. God has brought me from a mighty long way. And I let nothing, I let nothing separate me from the love of God. He obeyed the king. Job obeyed the king. Job was high and mighty. One of the wealthiest men at that time. Blessed with everything. Had wealth he had animals, he had land, children, friends, and help. But when he lost it all, his health failed. His friends turned their backs on him. He lost his children. He lost his houses. He lost his wealth. He lost everything that he had acquired in life. His wife came to him while he was almost on his deathbed and said to him, God has left you. He has forsaken you. He has taken everything that you have. Why don't you just curse God and go ahead and die because you seem to have nothing to live for. But Job said to him, Job said to him, what? Don't God slay me? Don't he has taken everything away from me? Don't my children are gone? Don't my wealth is gone? Don't my health is gone? Yes, but I serve God. He said, I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to depend on him. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding. But God will deliver on time. Jesus himself went to the Garden of Gethsemane. His disciples had turned their backs on him. He was in prayer. And as he had gone down on his knees to pray to his God, he said to his God in this dying moment, God, please, let this cup pass from me. But something realized in his soul and in his spirit, he recognized that this was the very purpose for which God had sent him. He felt the sins of the world on his shoulder. He felt the pressure on his shoulder. He felt the presence of death in his life. He felt like his friends had all turned their backs on him. But he said to himself, Nevertheless, forget about what I just said. I want to live for you. Forget about what I say. It's your will, not my will, be done. Jesus obeyed the king. No, obeyed the king. The three Hebrew boys live by their king. What does it tell us? They say it to the king. He can deliver us from your hand. Our God can deliver us from a fiery furnace. But if not, yeah, that's it. If not, if, if you can cast us in the fiery furnace and if we get burned up in the incinerator, if we are burned alive, we are still not going to bow down. Can I help somebody? There are rules of life. There are laws in this land. But I want to stop out here today and let somebody know 
Just because it's a root, just because it's a law, just because it is written, there is a higher authority than the Supreme Court. There is a higher power than the law of America. There is a higher power than, than what's written, what some folks have learned. Every knee one day has to bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. He is the lily of the best. He is our bright and morning star. And just because it's a law, my God has always had the last word. My advice to you, don't get caught up in the law. Obey the king. He has given us a book to live by. That's our roadmap. That's our guide. Every word in there is true. Stand on the promises of God. And when you follow God, when you follow Jesus, you can never go wrong. You will have trials, tribulations. You will have ups, you will have downs. You will have people that will stab you in the back. But God got your back. He promised. He promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. Even in the hospital, he'll be right there. Even in the courtroom, he'll be right there. As we stand in this house, as we stand in Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, as we stand, somebody, this is your opportunity. This is where you can get to know this God like the Hebrew boys did as your personal Savior. This is where you can get to know him and he can lead you. He can guide you. He, he can whisper something in your ear to keep you from falling. He can be by your bedside when you're sick. But you need to know him personally. It's okay if your grandmother, your granddaddy, your father, or your mother. It's okay if they told you about him. But you need to know him for yourself. As we stand, we said that we opened the doors of the church. Jesus did that on the campus. He, he suffered, he bled, he died. So that you can have eternal life. If you would like to get to know him, as your personal saint, don't you come. If you're listening through Facebook, Zoom, or YouTube, go ahead and send me a comment. Give me the opportunity to talk with you. Give me the opportunity to pray with you that you might have eternal life. We say the door of the church open. While you have this chance, you're here. Obey his call. Come to him just like you are. We invite you, while you have this chance, to come on. Come there. My father's brother, my father's sister, my father's children, while you have this opportunity, God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. We continue now with our worship as we come to worship God with our tithes and with our offerings. Someone say tithes. This is our opportunity to give. Our opportunity to let God know that we appreciate what it is that he has done for us financially. 
He blessed us with a job. He blessed us with income. Blessed us with health and strength. Day in, day out, he keeps on blessing us. We're called now to be obedient, to obey his word. He says, bring it to my storehouse. That's the church house. And prove me now. And everybody that's listening, viewing in, this is your opportunity to give. Cash app is there before you. You can give my uh, the Bible. That's there for you. Some have already brought it and dropped it off here at the church. 24 East Barton Avenue. Let every heart in the house stand. Those of you who are still cash out, come down with your tithes. Give them a to God. Don't come with a frown on your face. Yeah, come with a smile. Thank you for what he has done. I thank him for what he is doing. Yeah, I thank him for what he's going to do. He blesses me right now. Thank you, Jesus. One moment for you, one for me. 
from the book of Daniel chapter 3, verses 16, 17, and 18. Obey the King. And now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest rule of the Bible each one of us now, forever, three times together, let the church sing, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Stay safe.